Hey guys, Jimmy Vegas here, and let's understand rigid body and physics. So last tutorial we spoke a little bit about how physics and uh, colliders can all mix together to do different things. If we take a look at this scene we have right here, we just have this floating box. That's not really real, is it? You'd expect it to fall down. And this is where rigid body comes into play. So if we take that cube right here, click on add component, click physics and then click on rigid body, it will basically give it real time gravity and a little bit of physics going on. So you have your obvious settings here, you know, your mass, gravity, whatever. And this kind of thing is by default is pretty decent. It will serve its purpose. When you get into deep developments, like really advanced stuff, then this stuff is probably going to be really refined for you. It would take the time to actually change these things and make sure everything is right. But to kind of get the basics down now is all we really need. Now we've applied this rigid body and if we press play, this will just kind of fall and plonk on the floor. Great. That's exactly what we'd expect it to do. However, if we were, let's say, to change this on the Z, it won't just fall and just kind of stick as it is. It will write itself as you would expect it to do with physics. So it won't just land like that. It'll correct itself like that. And that's where the rigid body comes into play. And the rigid body can be attached with pretty much anything, but it works well with the collider. If we were to turn that collider off and press play, even though we've got the rigid body, it would just fall through the floor because there is nothing for it to collide with. Even though gravity is attached to it, there's still nothing for it to collide with. So that collider does need to be on. So let's take a look at what else we can actually do here. If we go to game object, 3D object and create a sphere, let's try and keep this as real as we would expect. I'm now going to delete the cube and then just attach that material onto here. And let's attach that uh, rigid body. So this is going to look a little bit unreal, to be honest. It's going to look fake because it just kind of plonks on the floor. It looks like a ball. It looks like it should bounce. So although we've actually got the rigid body attached and we actually have got some physics going on, this is where the rigid body and the collider kind of work together. Because what we can do is select a specific material. So let's select bouncy. And you can get this uh, bouncy physics material from the old... Um, what are they called? Standard assets. You can get them from that on the asset store or you can create your own or you know find them somewhere else. So all it would be basically be a case of is we've attached even more physics to this object now and if we press play because the collider has this it should bounce as we would expect to see. So it gives it just a little bit more realism but you have to be careful about something like this because if we set this to two it's going to look a little bit silly because it'll bounce and it's not 100% realistic there, is it? Because it's supposed to lose a little bit of mass as it comes down, but it's not really. So you need to just keep an eye. We've set it to one, but either way, having it higher than probably about 0 0.5 is a little bit silly because it would give less realism. And a lot of people in games want to go for realism, but either way, that is how the uh, rigid body and the box collider will all play a part in creating physics for you. So guys, I hope that helps a little bit more with physics and rigid body because there is a lot more to it. But once you have the basics down and understand why these things happen, then you can probably learn a lot more on your own. So don't forget, hit the subscribe button, click the bell icon as well. Stay up to date with all the content on the channel. There's a lot for you guys to learn. Thank you very much for watching.